if we can hi <laughs>so this week we are talking all about feeding your ball python i get a lot of questions about ball pythons and them not eating and what size to feed them and all that so i thought that we would do a whole video devoted to feeding them this video is sponsored by the dubia dude so make sure to stay until the end of this video to find out how you can save 10 percent off of your purchase of dubia roaches at the dubiadude.com for all of your other reptiles but yeah let's get started on feeding that snake. So first things first, when we talk about feeding these guys is what do they eat? Ball pythons are primarily going to eat rodents and of mice and rats, primarily they're going to eat rats. Now I know some people's ball pythons prefer mice over rats and that is okay. Rats are usually a more filling meal and they are easier to give your animal the right size in one rat as opposed to having to give them multiple small mice. So we will talk a little bit about mice and things like that, but primarily we are going to focus focus on rats in this video. So the first thing that everyone wonders when they get their ball pythons is how often do you feed them and what size do you feed them? As babies and juveniles, ball pythons are gonna eat about once a week. And as they get older, you're actually going to slow that down to about every 10 to 14 days. Now, Sterling here is a little chunkier than he usually is because for the first time in a very long time, he has actually been eating every time he's offered food. So we know that we need to slow that down a little bit. Anyways, now that we know how often to feed them, let's talk about size. The size of the rat that you are going to feed your ball python is going to be about the same size as the thickest part of their body. So you can see the thickest part of his body right here. We would want to make sure that the rat that he is eating would fit inside of that thickest part of his body, if that makes sense. That has always been the easiest way for us to pick rats because then as they grow, their body is going to get thicker and they are going to need bigger rats. So that kind of helps you know when to size up as they grow. So to us, that's always been the easiest way. I know some people will look at like percentages or weight charts. You can do that as well I will leave a link to that in the description below and basically you will look at how much your ball python weighs and it'll tell you what size rat your ball python will need at that weight which I thought was really cool I always use a kitchen scale to measure him I don't go by rat weights I always just do the body thing but in order to weigh him I use a kitchen scale and a bowl and that's the easiest way to do that so if you feel more comfortable with that method of choosing rat sizes that works perfectly as well last time he was weighed sterling weighed about 15 16 100 grams I think and that was months ago and at that weight he is currently eating large rats we go to our local reptile store and we just ask for the smallest large rat that they have and that's the size that he eats So on to how you want to feed your ball python in terms of frozen thawed, live, or pre-killed. We do frozen thawed for all of our snakes and in my opinion, it is the best way to go because you don't have the rat slowly being killed and you don't run the risk of your snake being injured because rats do have teeth and claws and they will sometimes injure your snake when they are being fed because they're fighting for their lives. So of course they're gonna try to do that. But sometimes ball pythons don't just take frozen thawed rats. And in that case, it's okay to feed them live because you don't want to starve your snake. When we first got my other ball python, Sylvanas, she had to be fed live because that's what she had always been fed. And we did that for a while as we were transitioning her into frozen thawed. And now she's on frozen thawed and that is fine. If you are wanting to transition your ball python into a frozen thawed diet, the way that we did it is we did the live ones for a while when we first brought her home because that's what she was comfortable with and we were trying to get her comfortable in her new surroundings. And then we slowly went to pre-killed and the way we did that is we went to our local reptile store who breeds their own rats there and we would get them to kill the rat in the store and immediately bring it home and put her in a bin 
in by herself with that and then she started eating that because it was still warm it was still fresh it still smelled like a fresh wrap to her and from that we were then able to do frozen thawed we first just had to make sure to heat up that wrap really good so it looked like it was still alive and we've kind of danced it around some and now she takes frozen thawed without a problem so definitely try that if that's an option for you and you're trying to switch them over to frozen thawed but that is something that you need to think about when you are getting a ball python because sometimes ball pythons will only eat live and if that happens just know that that is something that you will have to do whether you're comfortable with it or not because your snake has to eat so just keep that in mind Ball pythons are known to be very finicky eaters and that is one of the reasons that a lot of people will say that ball pythons aren't the best beginner pets because that is something that you will have to deal with and it is very stressful on you as an owner to keep buying rats and they keep getting wasted and then you're wondering why your ball pythons aren't eating and it's worrisome and it can be very stressful and just a lot. So let's talk a little bit about what to do if your ball pythons not eating. If this is the first time that your ball python has refused food, then you don't do anything because very often they are going to refuse a meal or two and that is 100% normal. If it has been a while, especially if we're going on in two months, then you definitely need to start taking some kind of action to get your snake eating. The first thing that I would suggest is to make sure that everything in your tank is correct. Make sure that the humidity is where it's supposed to be. Make sure that the heat pad is correct and you are using a thermostat to measure the temperature there. If your heat pad isn't at the temperature that it's supposed to be then your ball python probably isn't going to eat because it knows that it can't digest that food also make sure that your ball python isn't shedding most ball pythons will not eat if they are shedding because shedding is a very stressful and irritating process for them so that's really not the best time to even offer them food honestly because most of them won't take it to tell if your ball python is shedding the first thing that you can look at is their eyes their eyes will turn like a cloudy blue you can also look at their bellies their bellies will turn pink before they start to shed. And if you look at your ball python a lot, then you'll also just kind of notice that their colors start to dull out dramatically and that means that they are about to shed. All those things are indicators that it's perfectly okay if your ball python isn't eating. Next up, you can try feeding them outside of their enclosure. To do this, you're just gonna take a Sterilite bin and put them with the rat in that bin and close the bin and come back in maybe 20, 30 minutes and a lot of times just being trapped with that rat, they will go ahead and eat it. You can also try switching from rats to mice or mice to rats. Sometimes they get bored of one and they will eat the other, so that's always something to try. If you are going from rats to mice, especially a full-grown ball python, there aren't mice big enough for them. So if you normally offer your snake a medium rat, you might have to give them two large mice to make up for that amount of food. But if that is what your snake wants, then that's what you gotta do. But sometimes switching up that food definitely helps. You can can also try, which the first time I ever heard of this, it was so crazy to me. Some snakes only will eat certain color rats or they will only eat rats with certain color eyes. So if you have only ever fed your snake white rats and then you try to give them a black rat, sometimes they won't eat it. Or sometimes they might want a different color after they've only eaten the white rats or whatever. So try changing up what color you are giving them. Also know that during breeding season or winter things like that a lot of snakes will go on hunger strikes because in the wild they wouldn't eat during those times so breeding season is normally between about November and March for ball pythons so that's gonna be about the winter months where I'm at so basically if it's cold outside and your snakes not eating it's probably fine if you are feeding frozen thawed and your snake isn't eating make sure that you are warming up those rats enough you don't want to get them super piping hot obviously but making sure that it is warm enough to where their heat pits in the fronts of their faces are going to be able to sense it is super important for feeding them and we will get into how to warm up those rats or at least how I warm up those rats in a few minutes however if it has been a long time since your snake has eaten and you notice that they are losing weight 
or they are acting lethargic. They're not going back and forth from their hot and their cold side. They are hissier than normal. They're biting. Anything that they are doing that is out of the ordinary coupled with them not eating could indicate a bigger problem. So in those situations, you definitely need to take them to the vet. These things could mean respiratory infections or parasites, injuries, anything like that. So just make sure to take them to the vet if they are coupling that not eating with any other concerning behaviors. So to warm up those rats. So the way that I do that is I take a bowl and I fill it up about halfway with water. I throw that in the microwave for like 15, 30 seconds just to get the water warm. And I take the frozen rat and put it into a Ziploc bag. And I put that bag into the bowl and put a cup on top of it to hold it down. If the water gets cold, I heat the water back up again and just make sure that the rat itself gets pretty warm so that your animal can sense it. But that's the way that I defrost rats for my snakes. I have been asked quite a lot, what do you do with the rat? rat when your ball python refuses to eat it and the only thing that you can do is throw it away or you can try to feed it to a different snake if you have more than one but throwing it away is really your only option. When I originally was asked this question I actually got asked if they could refreeze it and try it another time and I really didn't know the answer to this question so I ended up googling it and no it's best that you don't do that. Just like you wouldn't defrost food at your house and then refreeze it and then defrost it again for just health safety germ reasons you don't want to do that to your snakes either so once they refuse it your only option is really just to toss it and try again next week super gross but on a personal note every time that i've tried to refreeze and then reheat a rodent the rodent has exploded So let's talk about ball python weight. How do we tell if our ball pythons are over or underweight? I found this super nifty chart that I will put right here for you to look at. It kind of lets us know how we can tell if our ball pythons are at the proper weight. We don't want their spine to be showing, but we also don't want there to be noticeable fat around their tail regions. Obviously, if you just fed your snake and they need to go to the bathroom, that area is is gonna swell up a little bit but we don't want like noticeable fat pockets and wrinkles when they're just slithering around a normal bend is fine but when they start to accumulate fat it kind of folds up a lot I don't know there you go <laughs> We definitely don't want that, but keep in mind females are going to be a lot thicker than males, but this chart still holds true with all of that. If we look at Sterling here, if we can get to his tail, you can kind of see his tail region. You can see that it kind of smoothly transitions into a tail. On the bottom side, there is a little bit of a bump down there, but he just ate a couple days ago, so that's why. But once they're an adult and you start feeding them a lot, then that's when we get super chunky snakes and that is not healthy. We don't want that at all. But just like with any animal, keep an eye on your animal's weight and make sure that they are healthy. when you are feeding them keep in mind that sometimes it takes a while for them to take that rat especially if you are using feeding tongs and you are manually dancing a rat around and trying to get them to eat it sometimes it takes a while for them to strike my female will strike almost instantly and this guy will act like he's not going to strike at all and then out of nowhere he strikes incredibly aggressively and it startles me every single time but when they are getting ready to strike you can kind of see a change in the way that they're doing things a lot of the times they're not going to do the typical cartoon rearing their head back coil but you can see that their bodies will start to pull back in getting ready to strike and it'll kind of start to tense up and that's when you know that they are about to strike and it's still a small adrenaline rush every time i feed snakes but that's okay. So now that we've talked all about feeding ball pythons, let's talk about feeding some other reptiles that we might have. This video is sponsored by thedubiadude.com. Thedubiadude.com is an awesome place to get dubia roaches delivered directly to your house. <laughs> dubia roaches are a great feeder for so many different reptiles. I use them as a staple for my bearded dragon, for my two leopard geckos, for my Pac-Man frog, my blue tongue skink eats them, my crocodile skink eats them. Everyone loves them. They're an excellent source 
of protein, much higher than crickets. They don't smell as bad as crickets. They are easier to keep alive than crickets. These things last forever. And now you can get them conveniently delivered to your house. Make sure to check out thedubiadoo.com and use my code L for 10% off of your entire order. Thank you so much to the Doobia Dude for sponsoring this video. But that's about it guys. Hopefully this was at least a little bit helpful in feeding your ball python and hopefully I covered everything. I always sit down and write out these videos and I always miss so many things. And yeah, so if I missed anything, like always, let me know down in the comments. If you've had a super finicky ball python, tell me what you did to make him eat. It'll help me in the future maybe and it'll also help anyone else that reads it as always guys if you're not already please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like subscribe and hit that bell for notifications every single time i put on a new video which is every sunday and wednesday this week's instagram shout out goes to lord elian for following me on instagram and going through and liking a whole lot of stuff i am not gonna lie guys i got super excited when i saw this because i have watched him for such a long time he has an awesome channel here on youtube so definitely go check him out anyways thank you so much you are the these days. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Let's be up here. No. That bin. For them. What are you doing? If we can, hi.